Today's paper is CornerNet, Detecting Objects as Paired Key Points. The paper proposes a new approach to object detection. Instead of using predefined anchor boxes like traditional object detectors, the method uses a pair of top left and bottom right points to detect objects. To do this, the authors introduce a new pooling method called corner pooling. The figure shows the architecture of CornerNet. A single convolutional network is used to predict a heat map or top left and bottom right corners of all instances of the same object category. And it uses embedding vector to group each top left and bottom right corner candidates. If you want to predict C number of object categories, the output size of the heat map comes with times height times C. There's no channel for the background and each channel is a binary mask indicating the locations of the corners for a class. One important technique used in the paper is called corner pooling. The method is introduced because there is often no local visual evidence for the presence of corners. To determine if a pixel is a top left corner, you need to look horizontally towards the right for the topmost boundary of an object, and vertically towards the bottom for the leftmost boundary. Another important technique used in the paper is called associative embedding. The method was first proposed in Poe's estimation field to group multiple joint candidates, and the idea was adopted in CornerNet to group the corner points. If a top left corner and bottom right corner candidates are valid pairs, the distance of the values become close to each other. No supervision is required to set the values of the embedding vectors. An associative embedding loss defines a push and pull loss, where the push loss lets the vectors in a different group get further away from each other, and the pull loss lets the vector values in the same group get closer. To know more about the technique, I suggest reading the original paper. The figure shows detailed architecture of CornerNet. It uses two R-glass networks as its backbone network. Instead of using max pooling, the network uses stride 2 to reduce feature resolution. At the endpoint of the hourglass network, two modules exist to extract top left and bottom right corner information. Each module consists of corner pooling layer, followed by three separate branches that predict corner heat maps, embedding vectors, and offsets. Note here that the offset predictions are used to obtain tighter bounding boxes. They are used to adjust the locations of the corner points. Now, this figure shows experiments conducted on corner net architecture. On Coco dataset, using corner pooling pulls up the performance by 2%. Especially, average precision on large samples goes up by 3.6%. Also, the researchers reduced the penalty given to negative locations around a positive location within a radius determined by the size of the object. To understand how this helps train CornerNet, a researcher trains one network with no penalty reduction and another network with a fixed radius of 2.5. The results of CornerNet on the validation set show that using fixed radius improves overall average precision by 2.7%. Especially on large samples, average precision increases by 5.3%. The table shows comparison of CornerNet with other state-of-the-art detectors. Among one-stage detectors, CornerNet trained on multiscale achieves 42.2%, and this performance is comparable with two-stage detectors. This table shows comparison of CornerNet with other state-of-the-art detectors when using different IOU thresholds. CornerNet achieves much higher average precisions when IOU threshold is 0.9 outperforming Cascade RCNN IOUNet by 3.9%, Cascade RCNN by 7.6%, and RetinaNet by 7.3%. This suggests that CornerNet is able to generate bounding boxes of higher quality compared to other state-of-the-art detectors. Lastly, here are some qualitative results on MS Coco dataset. And that's all for today.
see you next time with another paper.